I am Chetna Khanna, PGD Computer Science. Today, through this video program, we will learn about structure, type diff, and enumerated data type. Our objective today is to learn to declare and use a structure, initialize and access members of the structure using structure variable, explain the concept of nested structure, Passing structure as an argument, explain type def statement in a program, define enum statement and use it. Suppose we want to create a program to accept details of a student, say roll number, name and percentage. How will we go about it? I am sure you must be thinking that we will create three variables, one for holding roll number, second for name and third for percentage. But what if we have to accept data of 50 students? Then we will have to declare 50 variables for roll numbers, 50 variables for name and 50 variables for percentage. That makes the program very complex. I am sure some of you must be suggesting why not use an array? Yes, we can use an array. We can create three arrays, one for roll number with size 50 that will hold roll numbers of 50 students, similarly for name and for percentage. But then accessing detail of one student would be a difficult job. We can use structures in this case. Structure is a user defined data type. Unlike array, it can store heterogeneous data. Heterogeneous means it can store elements of different data types. Structure is a user defined data type because we can define it as per our requirements. It is a collection of variables of similar or different data types under a single name. We use the keyword struct to declare a structure followed by the structure name. The members of the structure are declared within the curly braces. We write the member name preceded by the data type. Every member declaration is ended by a semicolon and the structure as well is ended by a semicolon informing the compiler that the structure has been declared. You can see we have an example. We have created a structure for student which has theme three data elements, roll number, S name, percentage. As you can see, roll number is an integer, name is a character array of size 20, and percentage is of type float. So you can see that we have three different data types combined under one single name, that is student. When we declare a structure, the memory is not allocated to the structure. For example, when we are using a variable say a of type integer, we have to write int and then we write a so that we can use this integer. Similarly, for a structure, we need to create a structure variable. The syntax is same. You write the name of the structure and then followed by the variable name. Here we have declared a structure variable s of type student. In the second example, you are seeing that the structure name has been avoided because the structure variable has been defined just after declaring the structure. Now, how is memory allocated to a structure variable? Well, a structure variable as we have discussed consists of elements of different data types. In our case, we have taken the structure student which had three elements, roll number, the name and the percent. So as you can see in the figure that the variable name s is referring to the entire block that consists of these three variables, roll number, name and percent. Roll number being an integer is occupying two bytes. Student name being a character array is occupying 20 bytes. Percentage being a float is occupying four bytes. So when we want to see the size of the structure variable, we can use size of operator and when we are seeing the size of operator here, 
it is returning 26. That is the total of roll number, S name and percent. That is 2 plus 20 plus 4 that makes it 26 bytes. It is important that you note here that the storage size of integer data type is 2 or 4 or 8 bytes depending upon the compiler. Now after we declare a structure, we have to define or initialize the structure variable. If we want to initialize the structure variable with some values, we have to do it at the time of declaration of the variable itself. For example, we have the structure student and the variable stud. It has three values, one for roll number, Talim for the S name and 89.0 for the percentage. It is important that you note that all these values are to be provided in curly braces followed by a semicolon. After initializing a structure, this thought must have come into your mind that how many initialization we need to do. Supposing we require around 20 students, we would not initialize for 20 students. We would want to accept data from the user. For that, we have to access member of a structure. So how do we access member of a structure? The member of a structure can be accessed using the dot operator. So we, what do we write? How do we write it? The syntax is the structure variable name, dot and then the member name. As shown here, the structure variable name was s and we wanted to access supposing s name, we would write s dot s name. For percent, we would write s dot percent. For roll number, we would write s dot roll number. Here we have a program that is going to show how a structure variable can access its data members. In this program, we have created a variable s and we are accepting roll number, name and percentage from the user through the cn statement. As you can see, we have used s dot rno which we have discussed in the previous slide to access to get data from the user for the variable s and the data member rno. The output is shown on the right side where you can see that the program has now executed and is accepting student data. Next, again we have used a program wherein we want to display that the child is eligible for scholarship if he or she is scoring more than 75. So again, when we are using condition, we have to access the member. How do we access? We access by writing the structure name dot the member name. But in this case, we are talking about more than one student. For accepting data of more than one student, we are in this program declaring a structure variable s as an array that will hold data of 50 students. Now to access this array, we can use a loop here where we are starting from 0, moving on till the value the user enters and then while accepting through cn statement, we write structure variable square brackets i dot the member name. Here square bracket i indicates the index of that particular element. Now we move on to nested structures. It is also possible to have a structure within a structure. As shown in this example, we have a structure student wherein we had already declared roll number, name and percentage. But now we want to include date as well. Now date in itself can be treated as a structure which has three elements, day, month, year. So here we have first created the structure DOB that indicates date of birth and after that in the structure student we have declared the structure variable date. The syntax is the same, structure name followed by the variable name. So it is DOB space date and semicolon. Like a structure variable is initialized, similarly we can also initialize 
a nested structure. To initialize a nested structure, we write the following statement as mentioned student s, this is the variable s, is equal to curly bracket on the first value that is roll number, second value that is Vigyan, the name, third is our nested structure that is our date of birth, date. So since it compri comprises of three variables that is day, month and year, so we again start a curly bracket and provide the value for day, month and year respectively as mentioned in the figure followed by the percentage. Then we close the curly brackets and put a semicolon. The inner braces are required to separate the values although it is ignored by the compiler but for us also for readability we are able to understand that this is a nested structure. Now when we are accessing a nested structure, in the previous example we had discussed how to initialize a structure variable that contains another structure within it. But when we want to access a nested structure, we need to apply dot operator twice. As shown through this marker, here we have accessed date of birth structure and how are we accessing the variables here? We are writing s that is our main structure variable name, then we write date that is the nested structure variable name followed by the element name that is month, day or year. Here we are writing it as s dot date dot month. We can also say that s then date then month in the order of their appearance. So we have s dot date dot month. We can also assign structures using equal to operator but it is important that you understand that a structure variable can only be assigned in a structure variable that is of same type. As we had discussed that structure is a user defined data type so there can be multiple structures in a program but then when you want to assign one structure to another please ensure that both of them belong to same type. As shown in this figure we have created one structure variable s1, the another e that belongs to some structure emp and then another variable s which has been initialized. 23 Vigyan that we had done earlier. Now if we write E equals to S, this will raise an error as shown in the figure where it says that it cannot convert student to emp. This error is raised because E belongs to emp type and S belongs to student. Hence it is not allowed and is incorrect. Whereas in the second example you can see we have assigned S1 which is another variable for structure student, the variable S which again is a variable of structure student and here you can see that there is no error. Structures can be returned by a function as well, structures can be accepted by a function. As shown in this figure, you can see that get data is a function and before that you can see that student is written that is the name of the structure. That means that this function is going to return a variable of type student. Hence you can see in the end that we have a return statement that is s which is a variable of structure student. In the example shown in the right we are here displaying data and the name of the function is display data. Here the brackets contain student s, they contain an, it contains an argument. So this student s again signifies that s is a structure variable that is being passed to the function display data and then the data is being accessed by using dot operator. A structure variable thus can be passed to a function or returned from a function. Next is type def. Typedef provides an alternative name for a standard data type. This means that for example in my program I have created many variables and I remember the variable names. I remember student1, I remember student2, I remember emp1, I remember emp2, maybe any other variable name. But I don't remember which structure name does that particular variable name belong to. How easy would it be if I could use the variable names to declare another variable 
of similar type. For that, we use typedef. The syntax for creating typedef is typedef followed by existing data type, space, and then the new data type. As shown in the example here, we had created a structure variable s for the structure student. Now, since I have written typedef before the statement, I can now create as many variables possible with just the variable s as the data type name because it has been type defined now and whenever I write s space stud that means that stud is actually a variable of the structure student itself. Another example type def float real. Now real is of type float and in my program anywhere if I write real space the variable name that means that amount is of type float. Next we have enumerated data type. Like structures, enumerations are also user defined data type. They consist of integral constants. As shown in the example in the right, we have created an enum with the name as traffic light. This enum consists of three members, red, orange, green. We have three members and all these members by default are assigned a value. Red is assigned 0, orange 1 more than red and green 1 more than orange. But if we want to change the values, we can do it as it has been already shown in this program that red has been assigned a value 1. So, the 0 value is overridden and we have 1 as the value for red. Automatically, orange will be given a value 2 and green will be given a value 3. This program here is trying to illustrate that you cannot assign any other value other than the elements of the enum. As shown through this red box in the program, we have written T1 equals to yellow. But this will give an error because there is no such member in the enum traffic light, hence it cannot be assigned to T1. Similarly, here in the second statement, you have been given T1 equals to red, which is absolutely correct because red is a member of the enum traffic light. So the permissible values are red, orange and green. Here another example we are taking just to show that what values are being assigned we have used a for loop here. Now, here the enum traffic light as discussed in the previous slide has three members red, orange and green. Red is one that we had assigned the value. Orange will be automatically two and green three but here we are illustrating it through an example. I am using a for loop and with for loop I am writing i is equal to red, i less than equal to green. It is very important to understand that this red and green are not strings. They are integral constants, integer constants that have an integer value associated with them. That is why red and green have not been put in double quotes. And you can see the output is 1, 2 and 3. Through this video program, today we have learned to define and use structures, create nested structures and access them pass structure variable to a function, return structure variable from a function, assign structures using equal to, use typedef to create a new data type from an existing data type and create and use enum. Thank you.